Pray with me just for a moment as we get ready to go back into the Word of God. Our Father and our God, we are so thankful for how you have blessed us. Uh, you've kept us and brought us to another day that we've never seen before. Now, Lord, let no flesh glory in your sight. Whatever you do here this morning through the preaching of the word, I promise I'll take no credit for myself. But I'll tell men and women what happened here the Lord did, whereof we are glad. It was a fresh anointing that those that have ears Hear what the Spirit has to say to the church. Save that soul that's near as hell. Reclaim that backslider. And when you do all these things for us, we'll praise you in the earth. And then look one day to join the saints in eternity. To praise you until eternity rules. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and turn it into a praise. Mm -hmm. I am going to continue in a message that I started on last week. How many of you all were not here last week? Raise your hand. All right, then you're going to be a little lost for a few minutes. But we're going to catch you up. And what you can do is feel free to go by and Get a copy of last week's message. It'll catch you up. Glad for my musicians in the house. Amen. Last week I started a message. And I want you to get something out to write with and write on. Your iPad, your keypad, some pad. If you can't help it, go the old-fashioned way and use a pen or a pencil. We are about to become so technologically savvy until I fear we're going to forget how to use old things like pens and pencils. I talked to people and talked about people who were concerned about their future. I talked about people who were concerned about their presence right now. Ushers, I'm going to let you be seated because I'm going to talk a minute before I go to my text. Come on, celebrate these wonderful ushers around the door. I talked to some people and talked about some people who had concerns about how they were going to make ends meet at the end of the month. You ever been there? Wondering how with what you have, how in the world are you going to stretch it to accommodate all the obligations that you have for the month? Then I talked about those of us who were baby boomers and we are moving into our retirement years and you know it just seemed like it was yesterday and I was footloose and fancy free as a teenager, finger popping and ditty bopping. And now I'm an old man. <laughs> I am six decades in this world and it just don't seem fair that it went that fast. I've been looking back over my six decades and wondering where did the time go? So I am a baby boomer, and the rest of you baby boomers, you're probably wondering, well, how are we going to make it? And Americans, they say, are living longer, and so that creates a whole nother set of problems, that we're living longer, and that makes us prone to health challenges. And so some of us are fortunate enough to have insurance and, and then the insurance companies seem like they are trying to take advantage of us, raising our co-pays. I wish some of you co folk would help me. And uh, they'll tell you what kind of medicine they ain't going to pay for. Even though the doctor says it's the best thing for you, they want to recommend a generic brand 
Am I talking to somebody? And if you don't use the generic brand, then you're going to pay an arm and a for the medicine that the doctors say you ought to have. And so a lot of us are worried about whether or not we'll have enough. We're worried about whether or not our little meager retirement funds will stretch as long as we live. And I've tried to tell you all for decades or for at least 20 years that you've been here with me that America is not kind to old, poor black folk. They are not kind. America is not kind. And, and this is a true illustration that in some cases, seniors have to decide, do I buy my medicine or do I eat? Do I eat? And so these are challenges that we are facing. And the Lord just directed me to an illustration to share with you. And I am teaching from the subject, don't worry you'll have enough. Amen. Don't worry. And I got some from this side. This must have been the side that got a vision. This side must be worrying. So I'm going to try it again. Don't worry, you'll have enough. And the power of life and death is in the tongue. I just think you ought to confess it and say, I will have enough. The gospel recorded by St. Mark, and the story we're going to use is illustrated in all four, by all four of the gospel writers, but I have selected for our text St. Mark 6, 36-44, and this is one of those Sundays I'm not going to worry about you saying a lot of amens. I want to make sure that you're listening. And I would rather really your head be down more than you're looking at me because I want you to keep your Bibles open. And for you that got the electronic gadgets, I hope that your batteries don't run out. That's why you ought to always bring a spare. There's nothing like a dog-eared Bible that's been used and marked up. So the gospel recorded by St. Mark, and we did leave off in our last talking from 1 Kings 17 and 2, write that down, where the Lord sent Elijah to the widow at Zarephath. And she had something already prepared for him when he got there. And God met the need of the prophet Elijah at the hands of a widow woman, which made no sense that a widow would have enough to take care of her and a visiting preacher. St. Mark 636, if you have it, say amen. amen. Get your highlighters out so you can highlight some things. Send them away that they may go into the country round about and into the villages and buy themselves bread for they have nothing to eat. Write the word problem right there. Or put it somewhere on your iPad. Jesus answered and said unto them, Give ye them to eat. And they say unto him, Shall we go and buy two hundred penny worth of bread and give them to eat? He saith unto them, How many loaves have ye? Go and see. And when they knew, they say, how like this, five loaves and two fishes. And he commanded them to make all sit down by companies upon the green grass. And they sat down in ranks by hundreds and by fifties. And when he had taken the five loaves, how like that, and the two fishes, he looked up to heaven, how like this, and blessed and break the loaves, gave them to his disciples to set before them. And the two fishes divided he among them all. Write the word problem, write big problem right there. And they did all eat 
and were filled. How like that they were filled. Verse 43 and 44. And they took up 12 baskets full of fragments and of the fishes. Write the word miracle somewhere, wherever you're writing. And they did eat the loaves. They that did eat the loaves, eat of the loaves, were about 5,000 men. And the people said, Amen. Amen. Keep your Bibles open. I told you on last week, if this is going to work for you, you've got to try it. It, it does me no good to teach you something from a biblical standpoint and a biblical principle if you don't try it. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 and 7. I'm giving you some formulae to help you to stop worrying about whether or not you're going to have enough. I told you last week, if you want to have enough, you got to stop spending more than what you make. Can I get a witness here? You got to be frugal in some cases and not spend more than you make. You got to make more and spend less. So here is another principle I want you to remember. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, I'm going to read it from the King James and from the New Living Translation. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, if you have it, say, I got it. If you don't, say, wait a minute. All right, I'm going to wait for you. And that's why you should be in Sunday school. Shouldn't take you this long to find the Gospel of Mark in the Old Testament. I want to make sure y'all paying attention. Second Corinthians chapter nine in the Old Testament. In what testament? Thank you very much. But this I say, this is the Apostle Paul. But this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. Here is a principle for you. Every man according as he purpose in his heart. So let him give not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a hilarious giver. God loves a cheerful giver. I wish you could be here some Sunday mornings and see the faces of folk coming around like I do during the offering. It's like you're heading to have five root canals at the same time. I say this and I'm very serious. If you're going to give and be angry about it, don't give. Keep your money because you're going to need it. The New Living Translation. So I thought I should send these brothers ahead of me to make sure the gift you promised is ready. But I want it to be a willing gift, not one given grudgingly. Remember this, a farmer who plants only a few seeds will get a small crop. But the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. Verse 7 you must decide in your heart how much you're going to give and don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure for God loves a person who gives cheerfully you got that one go to St. Luke chapter 6 verse 38 these are biblical principles that ought to help you as you consider whether or not you're going to worry about tomorrow and whether you'll have enough I, I've come to try to sow into your spirit if you do the right thing you'll have not only enough but you'll have more than enough I wish 87 people would just jump up and say I'm gonna have more than enough when I need it time you got to talk to yourself look at the text at 
this Bible passage that speaks to the matter of obedience to the word of God. And what I'm about to read seemingly makes no good earthly sense. Luke 6.38, give and it shall be given unto you. This is King James. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over. The preface here, the foundation is, in order to have these other things come into play, you got to do one small thing that's a big challenge. You got to give. That's the challenge. That, that, that's the big challenge because the human mindset is, if I want more, I got to keep more. This is not what Jesus said. These are the words of Jesus, red letter edition, King James. Give and it shall be given. Give and it shall give, give and it shall be given you. Good measure. Pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men that you don't even know. Men you have not met yet. Shall men give into your bosom. For with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. New Life Translation, give and it will be given to you. You will have more than enough. Come on, say it. I will have more than enough. Yeah. Are you starting to feel this? Because some of y'all have been worrying too much about whether or not you're going to have enough. The Lord sent me here at a high rate of speed to tell you, if you do it his way, you're going to have not only enough, but you'll have more than enough. So what you worried about? Give, 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 and it will be given to you. You will have more than enough. It can be pushed down and shaken together. And it will run over as it is given to you. The way you give to others, look at this. This is, this is, this is the new life edition of Luke 6.38. The way you give to others is the way you will receive in return. New Living Translation, Luke 6.38. Give. Can't get away from that word, can you? Give and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full, pressed down, shaken together, to make room for more. Matthew, can you hear me? I don't think you heard that. If I give, my gift that I'm giving will make room for more. I'm giving and I'm realizing as I'm giving, I'm making room for more. I may not need more right now, but I'm going to need it in the future. So I'm giving now so I can make room for more. Running over and poured into your lap, the amount you give determines the amount you get back. The amount you give determines the amount that you get back. This part in here that says, shall men give into your bosom. And I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to teach you that you can look for blessings to come from some folk you don't even know. I said, you can look for blessings to come from people you don't even know. I, I was reading online. How many of you all have heard of this guy by the name of Steven Spielberg? Yeah. That's a rich white man. If he was black, he'd be a rich black man with all the money he got. Steven Spielberg has a yacht that he paid $120 million for, has 12, it has seven staterooms, and it's big enough to have 12 different passengers, including a crew of 25. Well, Steven Spielberg has said that that yacht is not big enough. 
So he's about to spend $160 million to buy another yacht that's about 22 feet longer than the one he has. And I thought, I said, Lord, it's going to cost him $160 million for this new yacht. Why don't you just drop a word on Brother Spielberg and tell him I don't need but two to build a new church and I just need 300000 to build this new parking lot. I think I'm going to start checking my mailbox out. See, y'all, y'all can't even, y'all can't even feel that. Y'all look at me and say, he done lost his mind up there. No, I, well, maybe I have. I may have the mind that was also in Christ Jesus. Give, and it shall be given back to you. Men shall give. And Steven Spielberg, last time I checked, was a man. And if he's going to spend $160,000 for a, a $160 million for a new yacht, he can afford to give me a couple of hundred thousand. Y'all ain't saying nothing to him. You got to start thinking like that. I, I, I ain't, I ain't going to do too much of you tell your neighbor stuff, but you got to tell your neighbor, start thinking big. Start, start, start thinking big. Start thinking bigger. Steven Spielberg don't need a new yacht for $160 million. And he got one that sleeps 12, got seven staterooms on there, and a crew of 25. Somebody all prophesies that there's a black preacher in Richmond that's giving. And he's giving, and he's giving, and he's giving. I got news for you. Sometime God will move on folk to help you, and they ain't got a clue that it was God. Yeah. If we sow material things, we can reap spiritual things treasures you never imagined yeah. now it's also true that we rather that it's also true that what we keep we lose and what we give we have people think well if i keep it i'm gonna be safe let me tell you something one sickness can rob you of everything you've ever saved everything you've ever put aside one catastrophic illness one judgment one bad lawsuit can rob you of everything. So why not just trust God and I'm going to give to start making room for more and I'm going to stop worrying about whether or not I'm going to have enough. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Yet. If we live to give, God will see to it that we will receive. But if we live only to get, God will see to it that we lose. This principle don't rather it does not just apply to your monetary giving but it's about your giving of yourselves to ministry we can give our times to a lot of different things and then ministry comes on the backside did you hear me God is jealous of your time if you get so busy giving other things your time, God has a way of getting your attention and the time that you should have been given, he'll take from you. Yeah, all right. Keep your Bibles open. Look at Proverbs 11 and 24. These are biblical principles I want you to remember. Yeah. When we give and give liberally, good measure, pressed down and shaken together, we are sowing plentifully, we can expect to reap a bountiful harvest. Now, I told you last week, and I'm going to stand by this, I'm not saying that stingy folk will go to hell for being stingy. Don't say I said that. But it did say you could have a very miserable life in this earth that you're living in. I don't think that stingy people are happy people. They're always worrying that somebody going to try to take the little bit that they got. But when you are liberal, when you are doing what the Bible says do, you don't have to worry about that. 
because the more you give, the more you receive. You cannot beat God's giving. Now listen, this is not a message to help the church. It's to help you. Because some of you are worrying, and I'm going to teach you a strange doctrine. You can give your way out of worry. I just think you ought to write that down. I can give my way out of worry. I can give my way out of worry. Proverbs 11, 24. There is he that scattereth, and yet he increases. It makes no sense to me. There is one that scatters, and yet he increases. And then there is that which withholdeth more than is necessary, but it tends to bring him poverty. Proverbs 11:25. The liberal soul. How like that? The liberal soul shall be made fat. And he that watereth shall be watered also himself. He that withholdeth corn, the people shall curse him. But blessings shall be upon the head of him that selleth it. New light. There is one. There is one who is free in giving and yet grows richer. I think about that. It makes no human sense. There is one who is free in giving and yet he grows richer. And then there is one who keeps what he should give but he ends up spending more. There is one who is free in giving, yet he grows richer. There is one who keeps what he should give, but he ends up needing more. The man who gives much. Am I reading the Bible? The man who gives much will have much. The man, the woman who gives much will have much, and he who helps Others will be helped himself. It's a strange phenomenon that the Bible teaches that the one who is free in his giving will grow richer. I'm trying to let you understand some saints that instead of worrying about whether or not that you're going to have enough, you ought to be worrying whether or not you're doing what God says to do. God is not a man that he should lie. God promised if you give, you are simply making room for more. How many of y'all this morning and you ain't ashamed to admit it? Your funds are a little thin. Yeah. How many of you got some things hanging over your head? That if something don't happen, it could take you under. Come on, talk to me. Then I'm preaching to the right crowd this morning. God is challenging you to realize that you cannot keep from giving to him and then expect to keep doing good. Will a man rob God? Wherein have you robbed me in tithing and in offering? Say amen. amen. This is to get you to elevate your way of thinking. To realize that you don't have to spend another sleepless night worrying about your future. I told you, I'm a baby boomer just like some of you all. And when this started to creep into my mind, I said, Lord, this is not of you. This is not of God. I've got to look at what the word says and then adjust my life according to the word. You said, if I give, I'm simply making room for more. And if I have a shortfall, watch this now. If I have a shortfall, God's going to take that shortfall and he's going to stretch it. Oh, Lord. I just wish you'd shake somebody's hand and say, he's stretching mine too this morning. Come on, tell him, say, he's stretching mine too. Yeah. 
Today is August the 9th. Some of you are worrying about August 31st, saying, I don't know how in the world I'm going to get all this stuff paid. I got some big bill. I got a big, a huge debt that I got to pay. I don't know how. Well, then you ain't thinking right. It's not up to you to figure it out. It's up to God to work it out. Woo! God, I feel some anointing in here. You better get this while it's good. I can't figure out how in the world I'm going to meet some of these obligations. And I stopped by to tell you, while you're worrying about it, just do the word of God. Just do the word of God. Just do the word of God. And God is not a man that he should lie. Get your Bibles out. Yeah. Is this making sense so far? Oh, I couldn't wait to get here to preach this to y'all this morning. Look in the language of the text regarding the feeding of the 5,000. Mark 6.35. It's also recorded in Matthew 14 and 15. It's also recorded in Luke 9 and 12. And in John 6 and 1. Did you get all four of those? Mark 6.35. Matthew 14 and 15. Luke 9 and 12, John 6 and 1. When you read all of these passages, you find Jesus teaching an object lesson on this word. I want you to remember it because it's going to be quite important. Jesus was teaching a lesson on compassion. He was teaching about giving of what you have to help someone else and then having more than enough coming from the most unlikely source. Yeah. Two things. He's teaching on compassion. Yes. And then he's teaching you about how to give of what you have to help somebody else and then you having more than enough left over from an unlikely resource. Thank you very much. I want to tie these four passages up and at least deal with three attributes and actions of Jesus' disciples. Now listen to this. This is a principle I want you to remember. Historically, listen to this. Many of the promises in the Bible are restricted solely for the people of God who demonstrate faith necessary to receive whatever they are anticipating. Did you hear me? Many of the promises are just for, in our vernacular, just for saved folk and people who got faith. If you have faith like a grain of, you can say to the mountain, be moved. You know, all of these things, uh, th there's a whole myriad of things in the Bible that is restricted solely to people of faith. But I've read these passages and I challenge you to read them because this is going to help somebody here today. I'm saying to you again, there are promises in the Bible that are solely restricted to people of faith that have a relationship with God. God loves them and they have faith necessary to receive. There, some of y'all don't fit that criteria. Yeah, some of y'all don't fit that criteria. But I've read this text. I've read all four passages. And it does not appear to me that this miracle of provision, write that phrase down, miracle of provision of more than enough was restricted solely to Christian believers as we would call them today. Look at this text. You're going to see it. It does not infer to me that this miracle was restricted solely to people who had faith. It does not say to me that this miracle was just for folk who loved Jesus and would, who would give their life for him. That ain't there. So you got to wonder, what was there? Well, look at Mark 6.34. There was at least one trait that stands out. Mark 6.34 
Jesus, when he came out, saw much people. Write that phrase down. Much people. Matthew, Luke, and John called them a multitude, much like the multitude we have here in our service this morning. Are you with me? Mark 634 said it was much people. We may have 500 folk here today. So I think we got much people. Nothing was said about their spiritual relationship with God or Jesus, if they had any. It simply says they were a part of the multitude. John 6 and 2 says they were part of a great multitude. Look at somebody near you and say, be glad that you're here this morning. Because you're in the right place. Yeah, yeah. This is a rare application where it doesn't seem that the Bible says in order for you to get blessed, you got to have faith. You got to follow Jesus. No, that ain't, that, that, that ain't in these passages. I, 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 and now, it is not the rule of the day, but rather it's all about timing. God's timing of mercy and compassion. Write that down. Some of y'all are going to be blessed here today, not because you saved, because some of y'all ain't saved. Some of y'all just showed up here this morning because you didn't have nothing better to do. Some of you came because folk invited you. Some came because your wife made you come. Come on, talk to me. But I want to show you about timing and place being proper. The text says in John 6 and 2, And a great multitude followed him. John's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 2. And a great multitude followed him. Why? Because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. You hear me? Let me help you. Why are some of y'all going to be blessed and help? Why are some of you going to be blessed financially? Because you're going to go out and tell people, you know, I listened to what that man said, and I tried it, and it works. The more I gave, the more I got back. You ain't going to talk about I was saved and filled with the Spirit. No, you're going to go back and say, this is what happened to me at that place on Turner Road. And because of what you say to them about how God blessed you by being here, they're going to come. And when they come, I'm going to have a chance to preach Jesus to them. And some of them come, they're going to get saved simply because you receive. Y'all ain't listening. It's in the book. The text says in John 6 and 2, the great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. It seems to me that this large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs he was doing for the sick. Turn the road, folk. We need God to do miracles in our midst. Y'all ain't ready for this kind of preaching. And not just for you, your four and no more, but we need God to do miracles so folk can leave this building saying we went to a service and it was not like any service we ever went to and God was doing miracles in the midst of that congregation. Come on, somebody and clap your hands. This, this, this multitude, it was like they were only there because of the possibility of Jesus doing for them what he was doing for others. I told y'all on last week, I wound up with $2,400 coming to me from the Commonwealth of Virginia. I ain't got a clue how I wound up going on this unclaimed property stuff. I don't know what led me there. I don't know how I got there. But they called me and told me and say, Reverend, you got some money coming. Yeah, I wish I could say that money cometh. I ain't going to say it. But it's on the way. And the lady said she was going to expedite my money. 
I went to the mailbox yesterday looking for the check. I'm going to be looking every day because I believe that my blessing is being expedited by a woman I don't even know. Somebody heard me say that and somebody told somebody who told somebody that works in this unclaimed property section. Somebody told somebody what I said and say, listen, call that man and ask him, can we do a seminar at Turner Road to see if anybody else got some money? Y'all ain't ready for this. We going to have a seminar done here because of what God did for me. And some of you going to be blessed. Y'all ain't ready for this kind of preaching. You going to be blessed. Some of you got money waiting in the state and you don't even know about it. Somebody told somebody. Somebody said this is what they heard. And they say, see if we can go to Turner Road and see if we can have a seminar and tell the folks. Listen, I was about to give up. I got tired of calling and talking to the answer machine and hitting the button, but I kept on pushing. I, and the more I pushed, God was saying, I'm working this thing out for you. All you got to do is be faithful. You keep giving, and I'm going to send some money your way that you did not even know you had out there. And the money has been there since 2012. God honors his word. These folk, and I'm going to cut this one. I don't want to preach this too long. I, I want you to get all of it because you need this because you're worrying. You don't see how you're going to make it. But I'm telling you, what you got is more than enough. And more than enough is on the way. And you got to have money to live. I don't want you always being poor mouth. I want you to have more than enough. And then I want you to stick with the principle. Keep giving so you can make room for some more. Or oh, y'all ain't listening to me. If your tank stays on full all the time, you can never fill it up again. You got y'all don't get this picture. You got to go a little bit. You got to go some places and use some of that gas so you can get back to the station and get it filled up again. John 6 and 2. John 6 and 2. A great multitude followed Yahshua because they saw his miracles which he did on them that were diseased. There is no inference that these folk were talking commitment. They were honestly seeking help for themselves. And that group is still alive today. They ain't willing to make a commitment to Jesus. They ain't talking about letting him be Lord of their life. But it's all about what the Lord can do for them. Now listen, 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 listen. I used to, I, I used to take issue with that group. But I, I have matured a bit in my old age. And I'm saying, bless them, Lord. Bless them. Take some of what you were going to give to me and give to them. My thought is, if the Lord blesses you enough, maybe some guilt will come upon you. And your conscience will start eating you up. And you'll start thinking, how can I receive so much from God and give him so little in return. So I want God to bless all of y'all Negroes that ain't saved. I want him to just open the windows of heaven and give you more than enough. So much so until you got to tell somebody if it had not been for the Lord on my side. You see, I want you to testify, you know, the Lord surely blessed me. And folk going to look at you and say, is this you? Sir? And before you know it, all of the stuff that he gave you won't mean nothing to you. It's going to all be about relationship. I want more of the giver than I do of the gift. I can't hear nobody. 
The gift can go away, but the giver lasts forever. Come on, clap your hands for the giver. Yeah. This group, this, 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 this group, this group, they just wanted to have their needs met. Yeah. They, they wanted to make sure that they have enough when the rubber meets the road. They wanted God to insert himself into their crisis. But they didn't want to make a public commitment. They wanted no private devotion. They just wanted to get everything that everybody else was getting because they saw some folk being blessed. And I'm saying to you, yes, God's going to bless you. And I know some of you ain't saved. Some of you didn't, you didn't even come here thinking about getting saved. But just maybe if God for a reason, for a reason, and that's what you got to get to. Why would God let folk be blessed and have their needs met and they make no commitment? The answer is in the text. Look at Mark 6.34. It has something to say about the motivation of Jesus. Mark 6.34. And Jesus, when he came out, he saw much people. Now this is why some of you who are not saved and are here and enjoying this service and why some of you probably going to be blessed financially you have made no commitment to God you ain't said Lord I love you forgive me but you are just in the right place at the right time when the rain falls come on now come on come on come on somebody help me out here I say when the rain and I feel some rain about ready to fall I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm asking God to bless some folk who have not made a commitment to him. I'm asking God to help some folk who are not saved. But there's a reason. God never does nothing without a reason. Sit down, sit down. Don't make me get too happy. Yeah, I, you got to want to know the motivation of Jesus. If the sprinkler system Look up at the roof. We got a sprinkler system. If a fire broke out out there in the vestibule, the sprinkler system goes off all over the building. If the sprinkler system goes off in here, I'm going to get wet. You going to get wet. He going to get wet. Everybody going to get wet. Well, when God starts to rain, When God starts to rain financial blessing, sometimes he said, well, I'm going to bless the just as well as the unjust. I'm going to help them that don't even know me. They're going to have to scratch their head and say, how in the world did this happen? And somebody will tell them the Lord stepped in and he made a way right on time. If you know he'll make a way right on time, tell your neighbor, I know him for myself. Hallelujah. Sit down to me. But I feel some rain. What is that? I hear the sound of thunder. I see the lightning flashing across the bosom of the cloud. And God's about to rain some blessings on some folk who do not deserve it. You know, you oughtn't to lie to yourself. You gotta, you, you, you gotta be true to yourself. How many of you all know for it, and I mean you know for a fact, that if God would start blessing now, that you do not deserve his blessing. Come on, put your hand up. Well, I got news for you, baby. He's about to bless your socks off. He's about to bless your socks off. He's about to open some doors that you thought were closed. He's about to make some ways that you did never think would be there. And he's going to do it for a reason. Come on. Sit down. I, I'm, I'm, ten minutes and I'm going to quit. I, I, I said, sit down, sit down. I read this story, Sister Nevers. I, sit down, sit down. I'm almost through. Yeah. 
People say, people say, say, people, people call me a fool. Say, I'm always giving. They say, I was in New York and they talked about me. Say, he's one of the most givingest bishops in the church of God in Christ. And people just laugh me sometimes. And I'm laughing all the way to the bank. God has a reason why he will bless the just as well as the unjust. There's a reason why some of you are going to leave here and you're going to be blessed and you're going to say, I know I don't deserve it. And then your conscience is going to start eating at you and say, how can you receive all these good things from God and you still walk away from him? Your conscience is going to bother you. So I'm saying, God, just bless them. Just bless them so much till they say, I don't want no more. Don't give me no more. These blessings are going to come for a reason. And I think you ought to understand that. And it's in the text. I read it and I couldn't understand it. I said, but what about your people who are struggling? People who are saved and trusting you. Listen, many are the afflictions of the righteous. Many. Uh -uh. That, 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 that just goes with us. And so we ain't going nowhere. Do you hear me? We ain't going to leave. If God doesn't do anything else for me, I ain't going nowhere. If he never heals my body again, I ain't going nowhere. Y'all ain't ready for this kind of preaching. If he, if, he, if he takes everything I got, I ain't going nowhere. He ain't got to give me nothing else to make me stay. I'm going to stay because I love him. I've gotten beyond the knee thing. I'm here because I, oh, 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 how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because he first loved me. So, I, 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 sit down, sit down. I ain't going nowhere. But it's you folk out there. You sit down, sit down. You, you ain't, you ain't so clear about this relationship stuff. So the way to get to you, God can get to you through your money and through what you need. Because some of you know you just you this close to bankruptcy. You this close to a foreclosure. You 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 this close to being evicted. You are this close to losing. And so God said, Well, what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna rain on them. I'm gonna rain on them. They've been coming to church. Some of y'all ain't members here, but you've been hanging around. You know why? Because you're in the multitude. Y'all ain't with this kind of preaching here. You've been coming. He said, I, they always praise him. They all, and he's the no singing this preacher you ever heard. Him. He sings all the time. Yeah. You know why I sing? Because you don't know this joy I have. The world didn't give it. May not have a lot of money, but this joy I have, the world didn't give it. And the world can't take it away. I sing because I'm happy. I sing because I'm free. And so you coming. You, you, you coming here because something is drawing you here. But baby, you getting ready for the, the best. You going to the chiefest place. Y'all ain't ready. That goes way back. Yeah. And so God says, God said, sit down. He said, he said I want to bless him. I, I want, and, 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 and I was, I was befuddled. Why would Jesus let the folk be helped in the multitude? I don't have a prophetic anointing to this extent. Now, some, some of my friends do. They can pick this one out and pick this one out and pick that one out. Every now and then, God pulls the curtains back and let me see some things just to validate him. Not me, but to validate him. And so I don't have that kind of anointing. But if I did, I, I might well say, okay, you, 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 God's going to bless you because of your life. You, 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 God, because of your life. But then that could be the antithesis. And you wouldn't like that part for me to say, okay, he's going to bless you, he's going to bless you, he's going to bless you, not because you deserve it, but there's a reason why. 
you need it and he's going to bless you. You ain't living worth nothing. You have not committed yourself to him, but he's going to open doors for you. He's going to give you more than enough. And so I looked at that thing and I wondered, I said, God, this ain't making no sense. I, I, don't, I don't understand, but it's in the text. Look at Mark 6.34. And look what Jesus said. Look at the motivation of Jesus. This is why some of you are going to be blessed today. Look at Mark 6.34. This speaks about the motivation of Jesus. And Jesus, when he came out, saw much people. He did not challenge them to let him cast the devils out. He didn't say, come unto me, all you that are laboring and heavy laden. All you. He didn't say any of those platitudes. But I'm reading the Bible, ain't I? When Jesus came out, he saw much people. So why did Jesus do what he did? And he was moved. Oh, that already got you right there. Because some of you are, 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 are being helped under that umbrella. Not because you're so right, but because of this verse right here. Jesus is here this morning. And some of you know you ain't right with him. But his compassion, somebody scream compassion. His compassion is in the room today. His compassion, his mercy, his compassion. Jesus is looking in this congregation today. The Holy Ghost is here today. And the compassion of the Lord is present. The text said, he was moved. Baby, you know you got to be in bad shape for you to move Jesus. I say, you got to be in bad shape for you to move Jesus. The text says, he was moved with compassion toward them. He was moved with compassion toward them. He was moved with compassion. He was moved. They were in the crowd. They were in the multitude. And Jesus didn't point them out. He said, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm, I want you to know why I'm about to bless you. Because I was moved with compassion. Oh, y'all ain't ready for this. I don't know about you, but I've been to that church where I didn't need nothing except his compassion. I needed his mercies that were renewed every day. I need the compassion of God. I needed God to have compassion on me. While on others thou art calling, do, do, do not pass me by. Look at the text. And I'm just about finished for today. Mark 14 and 14. Look at Mark 14 and 14. It, it, it really buttresses what, what, I'm sorry, Matthew 14 and 14. It really buttresses Mark 634. Listen to what it says in Matthew 14 and 14. If I'm reading the Bible, you ought to say something to me. Yeah. And Jesus, you do know him, don't you? Matthew 14, 14. And Jesus went forth and saw what? A great multitude. A lot of folk here this morning. A lot of folk here. Let, let you, you wait. I ain't going to embarrass you. I ain't going to shout you out. I ain't going to say, you need to come up here and get right with God. You, no, ain't the time for that right now. You got to see a miracle first. Miracles come to validate God in the earth. When people have their backs up against the wall and they see no way out and something comes along and helps them and they realize somebody prayed for me, had me on their mind. When they realize that somebody, how many of y'all have had folks say pray for me and then things got better? When things get better for them, you need to remind them that they ask you to pray for them and that they ought to take time and give God some praise. You say, you say, well, no, they can't, they, they ain't saved, they can't praise him. You're too dumb to talk to. If the rocks cry out, 
I say if the rocks cry out, even somebody that's a rank sinner ought to have enough sense to say, God, I couldn't have made it if it had not been for you on my side. If I'm talking to somebody, slap your neighbor a high five and say, the Lord helped me when I couldn't help myself. I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it, I'm feeling it. Yeah. How many of you know he stepped in right on time? Just before they were going to put you out doors, God sent somebody by with a little piece of money and say, here's a little something in your hand. I'm going to leave you now. Take your seat. I'm feeling you. I, I, I feel you. 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 Doctors say something. Lawyers say something. Don't make no never mind. I just want his compassion. Yeah, the doctor say I ain't gonna make it. The lawyer say I'm in bad shape. I don't care what they say. I just need his compassion. And you know what? That's why you gotta stay in church. Oh, y'all ain't gonna like this kind of preaching. Some of you don't come. You, you come every now and then. Listen, I need to come so I can be in the multitude. Y'all ain't read this kind of preaching. I want to be in the multitude so if God decides to bless in the multitude, even if my life is not right, just maybe God will bless. When God blesses the multitude, I want to be there in Saturday morning prayer. I don't pray at home, but I'm going to come if I just got to come here and, I, and, and I'm just going to sit here. I don't know what's going to happen, but if the saints are praying, if the saints are praying, God's ear is listening. And when God blesses them, if I'm in the multitude, somebody scream the multitude. If I'm in the multitude, just maybe he's going to bless me too. Take your seat. I got to close here. But if you feel some compassion here, throw your head back and say, thank you, sir. Yes, in us, it's in us. Mark 14, Matthew 14, 14. And when Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and was moved with compassion toward them. When Jesus saw the multitude without putting them on the witness stand. When Jesus saw the multitude in Matthew 14 and 14, he was moved with compassion toward them and he healed their sick. Saints, do you hear me? When Jesus is moved with compassion, that's the umbrella that you want to be under. That's the group you want to be with when he looks at this congregation. And he's looking now from the portals of glory through the power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit. He knows your needs. He knows your needs. He knows your needs. He knows your needs. And what is so absolutely marvelous is that he ain't gonna never get my needs mixed up with yours. He ain't gonna give you, y'all ain't ready for this, he ain't going to give you what I need, and he ain't going to give me what you need. Tell somebody, my blessing has got my name on it, and God's about to expedite it. And when he expedites it, I'm going to tell somebody that the Lord made a way for me. Somebody say, yeah. Lord, I got to leave you now. I said, I got to leave you now. I got to leave you now. I got to leave you now. I know the Lord is making a way right now. He's looking from heaven down with compassion. Oh, Lord, my life, my life, my life, my life. My life might not be everything it ought to be. But I thank the Lord. Yes, I do. Do you?
you hear me? I thank the Lord that he's kept me through dangers seen and dangers not seen. I thank the Lord that I know, that I know, that I know if it had not been for God's compassion, I would have been destroyed. What the devil, did you hear me? What the devil meant for my harm. Somebody say God. Come on and say God. Yes, sir. He stepped right in. He took my situation when I knew my life was not all that it should have been. Oh, his compassion. And Brother Bishop, I'm so glad. Yes, I am. That this morning you came to where I was and let me know it's not because because I've been so perfect it's not because I've been so right but God looked at the multitude and he saw me and he called my number and said because of my compassion I'm gonna reign somebody say rain I'm gonna reign on the just as well as the unjust I'm ready to pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive I need somebody here that can understand my preaching that will just say Lord I thank you for what you've already done Lord I thank you for keeping me Lord I thank you for watching over my family say yeah say yeah I don't deserve it I said I don't deserve it I don't deserve it I shouldn't have it but in the multitude say yeah in the multitude I see some people out there you know that you don't deserve it you know that you mess up you know you're not living like the Lord wants you to live but I'm challenging you this morning to come to your senses and realize the only reason you're not in central state the only reason you're not in the funeral home is because God has been compassionate upon you I gotta leave you now but I want to bless some folk I said I want to bless some folk can you hear me I want to bless you that are in the multitude I want to bless you because of my compassion I want to bless you because Jesus said if you loose it on earth I'll loose it in heaven if you bind it on earth I'll bind it in heaven yeah yeah this morning when I rose I didn't have no doubt in my mind that the Lord somebody say the Lord the Lord was gonna work a miracle because of his compassion say yeah yeah yeah, yeah. This is why. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me speak prophetically now. Just hold on. I'm going to slip into my gift just for a moment. This is why there are at least seven people here this morning. I'm in my prophetic zone right now. Seven people here this morning. The devil didn't just start trying to alienate you from the multitude. He's already done it. He has orchestrated a plan devised to keep you estranged from the multitude. Your church life 
has gone to hell. And you figure, well, if I get there, fine. If I don't, fine. That is satanic in nature. You need to be in the multitude. I just wish you'd shake somebody's hand like you're going to shake it off and say, you need to be in the multitude. Yeah. Your blessing is in the multitude. Oh, Lordy. Oh, Lordy. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Now, this is not a general altar call. I, I don't want 500 folk to come up here because I ain't talking about you. I am going to be talking about you in just a few minutes, but not right now. Prophetically, I need you seven people to do not waste one moment to run down here right now. Seven people. You ought to be on your way down here right now. Line up across this altar and we're going to bind that spirit. That's it. I don't need no more to come. Yeah, yeah. Come on. On this side, Angel. On this side. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Johnny. On this side. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He's been trying, baby, to keep you out. Silly, he's been trying to keep you out. And he almost succeeded. But your blessing, your blessing, your blessing, your blessing, your blessing, your blessing, your blessing. Somebody scream, your blessing. Your blessing is in the multitude. In the multitude. In the multitude, in the multitude. I feel an anointing here. But I also sense a satanic presence. You don't hear me. When you start dealing in spiritual warfare, Satan sends emissaries. And I'm sensing a satanic influence in the room today. I just need 400 people to shout the blood. I feel, I feel, I feel the anointing of God. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, he wants to destroy you. 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 These folk, you folk that have come to this altar in response to prophecy, I'm telling you, Satan has set up an orchestrated effort to keep you from being in the multitude. Your blessing is in the multitude. And so today, somebody shout today. And so today, God's going to raise you up. Let me say it again. God's going to raise you up. He's going to restore you. You ought to get glad right now, sister. He's going to raise you up right now. He's going to restore you right now. The joy that you used to have, you're going to have it again. This is what I need. I need 42 people that are prayer warriors to get in the nearest aisle because we're going to deal with spiritual warfare. I need 42 people, even in the balcony. If you want to stand with me, I want you to stand against that back wall and we're about to pull some strongholds down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Every person on this altar, even now, you ought to be talking to God for yourself. I'm telling you, it was the devil. It is the devil. It is the devil. It is Satan. It is Satan. Satan wants to keep you away from the multitude. But Jesus said, when he saw the multitude, he had compassion. And this morning, God's compassion is in the room. Come on, somebody. Begin to give God a praise. Begin to give God a praise. Come on and give him a praise. Come on and give him a praise. Come on and give him a praise.
Come on and give him a praise. Come on and give him your best praise. Come on and give him your best praise. Make the devil mad in hell. When the praises go up, the blessings come down. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Come on, come on, come on. It is compassion. It is compassion. It is compassion. I want it back. I want it back. I want the anointing back. I want the anointing back. I want the anointing back in my life. I want the joy of God in my life now. I need you, Jesus. Come on, somebody scream. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you, Jesus. I need you. Prayer warriors, this is where I need you. We got to pull down these strongholds. Satan does not want to release these folk. He has orchestrated a plan to separate them from the multitude. They've lost their joy. They've lost their peace. But this morning, Jesus becomes our great restorer. He comes to restore. He comes to restore. Somebody shout, he comes to restore. Now let's pray, Father, in the name of Jesus. Somebody call his name. In the name of, come on and call his name. In the name of Jesus. Satan, we bind you. Satan, we bind you. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of the Christ of God, you foul spirit, you come to hinder, you come to kill and destroy, but these souls have ran to the altar, not to give their money, but to give their lives, and to renounce the things of darkness. We recognize that the Satan is trying to separate us from the multitude. But Jesus, you have compassion on the multitude. Jesus, all power in heaven and earth is in your hand. Jesus, 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 your name is a strong tower. Jesus, Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, we're calling on you now. Jesus, we need you to pull down strongholds. Jesus, let the Holy Ghost have the right of way. Holy Ghost of God, have the right of way now. Do whatever you need to do. Our souls say yes. Open your mouth. And somebody say yes. Come on and tell the Lord yes. Say yes again. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes, we'll obey. Restore. Somebody shout restore. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. Restore unto me my peace of mind. Restore unto me everything everything that the devil has stolen yeah restore 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 yeah somebody shout restore now somebody shout it is done come on and say it is done lift your hands in the sanctuary come on lift your hands up lift your hands up Lift your hands up. Lift your hands up. Lift your hands in the sanctuary. Come on, daughter, lift your hands up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, come on, come on. Restore, restore, restore. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. Satan tried to take you out, but he couldn't do it. God brought you to the multitude 
and the compassion of Jesus. Somebody praise him. Come on and praise him. Praise breaks the stronghold. Let your praise go up. That stronghold may be broken. Come on, daughter. Come on now. Yes, sir. He kept you. He's kept you. Restore. Restore. Babahoya. Restore. 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 Come on. Come on. Come on. Restore. 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 Come on. Give him a praise for restoration. Give him a praise for restoration. Bless my daughter. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Focus on him. Forget about other things. You can have the whole wide world. And if you don't have Jesus, Angela, you don't have nothing. But the Lord comes to restore. He says to you today, set your affections on things above and not things in the earth before you lose everything that you've ever treasured. Jesus says, stay in the multitude. Stay in the multitude. Stay in the multitude. Somebody give him praise. Stay in the multitude. Stay in the multitude. Stay in the multitude. Come on, Sola. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, 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 yes. Satan is trying to separate you. But what shall separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus? Nothing. In all these things, we are more. Somebody shout more. We are more than conquerors. We are more than conquerors. Now come on and pray. Come on, somebody help these saints praise Restore. 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 And I'm about to Restore. Yeah, yeah, boy, say. Restore. I'm about to Out of your belly, son. Yeah, I'm about to say. Out of your belly. God wants to give it back to you. You lost your joy. You lost your peace. But God come to restore. Somebody shout restore. Say it again, restore. Out of your belly. Shall flow rivers of living water. Restore. Restore. No, 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 Restore. 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 Restore now. Restore now. Restore now. Restore now. As you give yourself to him. He'll restore. He'll restore. He'll restore. And it is done now. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Praise him. Praise him. Come on and give him one last praise. Restore. Now, listen to me. Hallelujah. I want you prayer workers on the altar. Now listen to me. Do not prophetically do not let and one of these folk that came to this altar walk back to their seat by themselves if you do that spirit is going to come and take the seed that's been planted in them away from them and they're going to wind up in a worse condition so when you walk them back the whole way back you are pleading the blood of Christ the blood of Christ the blood of Christ the blood of Christ and the more you sow that into them the more their joy is going to come take them now and walk them back to their seat and just plead the blood and let the joy of God the joy of God answer them. the joy of God 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 
Yes, 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 yes. I'm in the multitude. I'm in the multitude. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Stay with him, stay with him, stay with him. Stay with him, stay with him. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, Lordy. Oh, Lordy. Oh, Lordy. Oh, Lordy. 